Hello. In this section, I'm going to review some of the fundamental concepts of networking, the core concepts that are really important to understand in order to be able to design and run a network effectively. Now, to do this, I'm going to refer to this diagram, which you may have seen before. It's the OSI, Open Systems Interconnect, model, seven-layered model. And it breaks down networking into these individual parts called layers. Now, each layer provides a service to the layer above, and it makes use of the services of the layer below to do its job, except for layer one, which is the bottom, and therefore it doesn't have any layer below it. So let's look briefly at the function of the layers. Layer one's job is very simple. It's just to take a stream of zeros and ones and transfer that across some medium, like a copper cable or a fiber optic, and convert them back into a stream of zeros and ones at the other end, hopefully the same stream. Layer 2 is called the link layer, uh, or the data link layer, and its job is to organize that stream of zeros and ones into frames, meaningful units of information. And those frames may also contain addressing information, so that a frame can be received by one particular device but ignored by other devices, and it may also contain some error detection information. Now, Layer 2 is what we use for building our local area networks, or LANs. Layer 3 is the network layer or internetwork layer. Now its job is to combine multiple layer 2 networks together, to join them together so that data can flow from one network to another network to another network to reach its final destination. And it's layer 3 that allows us to build a global scale WAN, in other words, the internet. Layer 4 adds the ability to address data to a specific process running on a machine. And Layer 4's job can also include taking large amounts of data, breaking them up into smaller datagrams that are suitable for Layer 3 to deliver, and to reassemble them, and also to retransmit data when there's an error. Layers 5 and 6 you don't have to worry about because they're not actually used in the Internet Suite. And layer seven, the application layer, is the actual job you were trying to do in the first place. So for example, a web client tries to fetch a, a web page from a web server, or an email server wants to deliver an email message to another email server. And at layer seven, there are their own application protocols for doing each of those different jobs. So by putting the layers together, you've taken a complex job, such as reliably transferring a web page from one side of the world to the other, and broken it down into smaller pieces that can work together to perform that job. Now, this layered model is not just some theoretical model. It very much demonstrates exactly how the networking is working. And if you look at packets being transferred across a wire with a, a tool that will read and analyze them, such as Wireshark, you can actually see different parts of the packet that belong to each of these different layers, each doing the jobs that those layers need to do. And so using this layered model helps you to design your network right so that it can work reliably and it can scale.